Maths. Oh. We'll try that again. Maths. Yay! Not. Your school days. Stop. Heel. Love them. Yeah. <laughs> or loathe them. I will be your teacher all the way through to GCSE. Oh, so you kill me now. You never forget them. <laughs> At Willows High in Cardiff, for an uncompromising head teacher. Girls, I don't know what's slowing you down, but it is starting to annoy me. There's a job to be done. It means everything to me that all you guys get is one thing, and that is a choice. To turn around a school that was until recently one of the worst in Wales. I think an education should give every child a chance. I don't think it's fair that actually your postcode can determine your life chances. But when you're dealing with teenagers... Shit, I got assembly! Life's never straightforward. We're Switzerland. New Zealand. No, it's somewhere like that, though, isn't it? We filmed over a year to find out what life is really like in one of our secondary schools. For the teachers... <laughs> so everyone in the department is ganging up on your son. And the kids at the very start of adult life. Come in and damage any more school problems. Oh, my damaging stuff! I want the right staff in my school, people that genuinely want to champion the underdog. They give everything to the children of their school. Give me a high five. Excellent. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> when a child makes it against all the odds, it's the most rewarding thing of all. Yeah. How can we get called sheep shadows? There are like five million other questions you could have asked me. Why did you come up with that one? <laughs> In September, Willows High School welcomed 140 new students. Look at me. Oh, MG, let's have a look. You look like a little man going to a wedding or something Smart. like that. Look, do you think you look good? Get in there, double quick time, come on. Five, four, three, two. For PE teacher, Mr Roberts, this is his 15th year welcoming the new arrivals. Junior, come sit there. Roland, come sit there. Sir, how old are you? How old do you think? 56. 56. Sir. It's a massive adjustment. They, they've gone from being top dogs in their primary school. You know, you are the oldest kid in your school. All of a sudden, you're the youngest kid. And you've got some guys in year 11 who are six foot three, six foot four. It's, uh, <laughs> that's quite daunting for the staff. Never mind the kids. You've got to choose which five people you will save based on the information and you need to discuss it with each other because you all need to agree. If someone on your table is quiet, it's your job to involve them. It's your job to ask them questions and encourage them and support them into sharing their ideas. It's really important that we try and help you seven as, as quickly as we can to settle into the school. That's partly why we do the house system. It gives them something to bond over. It makes you feel part of the school. All students at Willows are put into one of four houses. Harlech, Carnarvon, Denby or Raglan and compete throughout the year to become house champions. I know people associate the house system with private schools or indeed an old-fashioned type of system, but in this school, it's one of the things that actually can really help the kids with having a sense of belonging. Shit, I got assembly! <laughs> Today, Raglan are meeting to hear their current position in this year's competition. OK, morning, guys. Take your coats off, please. Their head of house is Mr Roberts, who last year led Raglan to victory. Right, uh, Mr Hancock, next week, or in the last week of term, is going to have a massive smile on his face, OK? Because he's just put all the house points together for this term. And it doesn't make good reading. We are miles behind in three other houses. We need to stop getting referrals for silly behaviour. Look at the number of referrals, 939. That's the reason we're last. Unless all our changes and improves, we haven't got a chance of winning. 
I can stand here and spout off every single uh, assembly, but without you guys helping me out, it's not going to work. <laughs> Have a nice week. Thanks for listening. Jamie, stay where you are. One member of Raglan is New Year 7, Assad. Don't even think about it, boys. You, be, well, you should have run earlier, shouldn't you? You got half an hour detention. Got your names down. Do you think you've got a reputation at the school? I think I'm probably worked, like one of their worst students. Despite only being at Willows for a matter of weeks, he's already received more referrals than any other Year 7 and been put on daily report. I just like being naughty. This is really funny. I can't actually control that. Like, if I've tried to be good, I can't. I just keep on being naughty. It's just a habit for me. Assad, sit down a minute. Why are you putting your coat on? Sit down. Do you know what? I've, I've been a teacher for a long time. That's probably one of the worst excuses I've ever heard. You were late because your mum bought you a new bag. How many crosses did you have on your report? Eight. You had more crosses on your card than a Valentine's card. The rest of your life is affected by what you do in school. You're not in primary school anymore. You're in big school. All right? And each time you started acting like it. Is it important to be popular? Yeah. Because since I've been naughty, I've been popular. I'm, I'm probably the populist in Year 7, one of the populists. Like, I ain't one of those people who don't have no friends who just by themselves in dinner time and break time. Wait, what? The scrounge with my food! Scrounge with my food! The scrounge with my food, they are. Another member of Raglan adjusting to life in Year 7 is Aaron. Is it difficult to change schools? Well, it's a little bit, yeah. She can get a little bit nervous. Were you nervous before you started? Yeah. Because I thought I'd, like, get bullied and all that. The fuck off! Can you tell me what else is different? Well, first, obviously, you, wear, you have to wear, like, ties and blazers and all that. In primary, you just wear jumpers or, like, T-shirts. In secondary school, you have to go to all different classes. As the spirit departed, another took shape, a horrible creature in a hood and a cape. As a head of house, my job is to help them, basically help them get settled in. It's not, it's not to do with, you know, the subjects, the academic side of it. My job is the person, the, the pastoral side. Then handing out gifts, he tramped through the chill to call on his nephew and wish him goodwill. And so began a most wonderful day, full of laughter and joy and peace. In his first weeks at Willows, Aaron has also caught Mr. Roberts' attention. Aaron. Right. So he's got 14 lates. Mr. Roberts has called a meeting with Raglan welfare officer Kerry to voice his concerns. The first three or four weeks, he was late pretty yeah. much every day. That was going to the bakery. <laughs> Mum told me that. Mum wasn't happy because no. he was taking many... He's having many off here. Right. And going to the bakery on the way to school. Have you ever been in detention at school? Well, quite a lot of times. Like, for coming in late, being, you know, nasty a little bit. Sorry, Blitness. I can't believe you, you've been nasty, Aaron. I know, sometimes, though, I do. I can be a little bit cheeky. What sorts of things do you say? Well, I'm, I'm not... I I'm, can't say this, but I say the F word sometimes. Um, the B word, the S word. And that's it. You could have 120, 122, two above, or you could have 119, 118, two below, OK? I'm a bit concerned he doesn't seem so have made any friends? Are you aware of any friendship groups that he's got? I haven't even noticed, to be honest. You don't see him with anybody. I'll have a chat with him about okay. where he goes lunchtime and who he bothers with. I'll have a little chat to see if, we can, if I can work out who his friends are. Can I have a pen, please? Well, it's, meant to, it's a pen, right? But, but you, can, you can use... You can put things in your and flick it. My mum gave it to me. My mum gave it to me too early. She meant to give it to me for Christmas, but she gave it to me now. 
pen for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. When, when Year 7 come to us, they've got an array of different um, issues, and it's really important that as soon as they come to Willows, or as soon as they come to this school, that we help them as quickly as we can, whether that's making friends, whether it's behaviour issues, whether it's anything, you know, social issues, whatever. Because if they're not happy, they're not going to learn. So what I was wondering was, are you getting on? I'm good. So what do you like about this school? I'm going to learn more things. What's the bad things about it? Yeah, detention. What are you getting detentions for? I'm coming in late. Right, so why are you coming in late? I'm getting up early enough. What time do you go to bed? Not ten. Ten? How do you feel then in the mornings when you get up? Knackered. Knackered. I think you should go to bed earlier and then get up earlier. And you won't be so tired in the morning, will you? As I am with everybody else, I'm just wondering whether you've settled in and made friends and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because it's nice, nice to have friends, isn't it? Yeah? So, who do you play with? Gareth. Who's Gareth? Um, do you know the one with ginger hair? Or, 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 OK, yeah, yeah, I know. And, um, I don't know, I've forgotten his name now. I've forgotten his name. Are they good friends? Yeah. Yeah? OK. Come on in. Do you think friends are important in life? Yeah. How important? Well, very important. Because for them to, like, um, be there for you, that's what friends are for, like. They, like, help you with stuff and, like, um, take care of you. It's the end of the day. And whilst most pupils are on their way home, Assad is due to be in detention for being late. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's next to he has got detention. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying that. Like. What's the tension like? So boring. You're just sitting there by yourself for an hour, just look like, like reading a book. Stop talking. Now read yeah. your book. OK, sorry. Chapter one. What's the point of detention, do you think? To, like, make you stop, like, to try and make you stop being naughty, to think, like, oh, why, I, sh I shouldn't do this again, something like that. Does it work? No. This book's boring. Assad is trying to be super cool. He's trying to be hard in front of his friends. He's trying to be the main man of Year 7, and, you know, basically all he's doing is building himself a reputation where he's on the, the radar for lots of things in the future that he's not going to like. What's the time? Right, I need you quiet now, guys. This is detention, not a social club. He's got to be made aware straight away that this is not acceptable and we're not going to put up with it. <laughs> yeah, yes, boys. Do me a favour now. Let's not take those out. Because we're not on lumpers. Um, We're not where's Wally either. Get him out. I'll just get you a placard that says, look at me. Shall I do that? Is that what you're after? Yeah. You are firstly going to write, and if anyone copies this while I'm doing it on the board, I am going to go bananas. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Ellis. It's not going to be very clear if people aren't listening. Asad, you need to look this way. OK? Take your bag off the table. Get my pen. Don't answer me back. Do what I said. Kate! Just six weeks after starting at Willows, Assad is becoming well-known around the school. Why is it that everyone else can do the work, then? What makes you different to everyone else that they can do the work? Nothing done, very little done, nothing done. Assad is um, he's a daily um, point of contact. He is being referred every day. He's going to our isolation room almost daily. He doesn't respond to anybody's instructions, and he, at the moment, just doesn't conform to anything that he's been asked to do at all. What happened? Hey, Jamie, I'm glad you find it so funny. Sam, right? so, can you tell me what Very happened? Very mature of you guys. It's break time, and Assad has been brought to isolation after being involved in a fight. Can you punch you in the stomach? Is it sort of touch? So I, I, I don't know how bad no, or what's no. happening. Should we take him to the warehouse? Yeah, if we take him up to the warehouse, I can't be. No. Yeah, I'll take him Do you want to take the chair? Yeah, is it, so because he's, he's, be, he's obviously yeah. been winded. Are you all right? Is that really yeah. over you? Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll tell uh, them on the way. Is it possible sometimes to be naughty and get away with it? Sometimes I'd give them, like, those looks, but then they believe you. Like, oh, I didn't do any of that, and then they would believe me. What's that feel like to get away with it? It's just too funny. Bless him. He's been punched right in the chest and his chest is really okay. Is it still painful, Assad? Still painful? Can you breathe? Let's have a look at you. Come on, you don't need to cover your eyes, mate. Look at me. Look at me. Do you feel dizzy or anything? Got any pain there? Do you think you can stand up? Okay. Do you think you're okay? Right. Okay. Yeah, do you think you're okay? You just need, you need a little bit of TLC? Yeah? Or do I need to ring just... Mum? Should we yeah, ring Mum and see what Mum yeah. says? Hello, hi, is that Azad's Mum? Hello, it's Kerry from Willows High School. I'm afraid uh, Azad's been involved in an incident today where another pupil has punched him in the chest. Azad is still having pain in his chest, so I would rather him be brought home to be looked at by yourself. OK. Why are you sat here? Kim, punch you in the chest. Why did he punch you in the chest? No. So how are you feeling now? Well, it's a little bit. It hurts a little bit. Right, so it's not stopping you going to class, is it? I think it's going home. It's going, going home. home. Well, because you've been punched? Yeah, he's been punched, he's red, he can't breathe properly, he's telling me, so I've just done his mum. Well, that's rubbish, isn't it, really? Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling to believe that you're as bad as you're making out. On a scale of one to ten, ten being the worst, one being the, one being the least, how much is it hurting? I want Mr. Sage this morning. And uh, I'm seeing Mr. Sage later, so I'll let him know your concerns. It's the pain right. subsiding now. Oh, right, yeah. then, you see, the thing is, if he... Before... I'm not saying it's a waste of time, Kerry taking you home, cos if you need to go, you need to go. What I'm saying is, if, you, if you're not in that much pain, do you really need to go home? If that pain subsided now and you're OK to go to lesson, tell me and I'll ring Mum, cos I'm happy to do that. Do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Good man. Right. That's well, all we needed right, to know. That's what I was getting at, yeah? Yeah. All right. Good man. It's quite difficult to judge whether they're telling the truth or not. There's always new ways of trying to pull the wool over your eyes. But Assad's built himself a reputation, so if he says he's injured, unless he physically can't walk down the corridor, I'm going to send him back to lessons. 37 times 8. Shh. Eyes down. Do it. Oh, Mahima, Mahima, why do you break my heart? Do you think we've really got the right style with this? Do we sort of be kind up to a certain time and then start to get nastier? You know what I mean? Yeah. A bit more driven, a bit more spite in the voice. Should we try it on this one? Guys, come on, you're late for school. Walk a bit faster, please. Come on. <coughs> Mr Norman's in the mood for trouble this morning. You're wasting my pen. It's after lunch and Assad has been sent out of class after an incident in maths. Basically, Cumin's brought a little BB gun into school with him, and Assad's shot it in the class. Because it's so serious, the decision on how to deal with Assad has been referred to head teacher, Mrs Ballard. Do you think it warrants being excluded? Both or? of them. I'd like to give them both a three-day exclusion each, and I'd like to see both of them for integration, please. We've got to be tough on it because we don't put up with it. Yeah, OK. Right, you two, come here a minute. Assad, you're going home. If you're stupid enough to fire a gun at somebody in a lesson... No, father, Well, obviously you did. That's why I've come to see you. I'm getting a little bit sick of you, to be honest with Assad. I would say school is actually a really bad thing sometimes. I'm not, like, really used to it, cos, like, we used to be the big ones, and now we're, like, the small ones. <laughs> we laid the law down pretty strongly to him. Until he changes his attitude, until he, cha until he physically changes what, how, how his demeanour and so on, um, he's just digging himself a bigger and bigger hole.
I'm going mad. What? I'm going mad. Why? I forgot what I just come here for. It's worrying, eh? Can I have Ireland, please? Yeah. Right, come on, guys. Mr Roberts has come up with a plan to help Aaron adapt to life at Willows. Right, do you know who this is? Do you know who this is? Jack. Jack. What's Jack? Um, I think captain. He is the captain, that's right. right now what He's I'm... enlisted house captain Jack to help Aaron settle in. What do your mates think about you? Oh, teacher's pet. That's a, that's a main one. Are you being a teacher's pet? No, no, I'm not. I get along with a couple of teachers. I'm not a teacher's pet, though. No in here. Right, now, what I've asked Jack to do... There you go. ..is to be, a, like, a, a buddy, like a mentor, OK, to look after some of our Year 7s, OK? If you're constantly going to be late, he's going to be onto you, OK? But on the other side of that, is if you've got a problem, you can go to Jack straight away. Don't so... be scared to speak to me either. I'm... All right. So he's going to be like, like a big brother, OK? He's not your brother, but he's going to be act acting like a big brother would. Why are you going in late, then? Going to bed late. Yeah. We need not... to get to bed early, don't you? What did he say? Need to go to bed early. What did I say? Did the same thing. Exactly the same thing. All right, so we're both saying it. Does that make sense? Yep. Want to yield your back? Yeah, please. Want to go home? Uh, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. See you later. Okay. Just wanted to keep an eye on Aaron, really, because I'm a bit concerned about him. Cos I'm not sure... I'm not sure with him whether he just likes his own company or whether he just hasn't made many friends. When I asked, asked him who his friends were and he told me, I was on duty the day after in the canteen and said, oh, where, where's, where's, your, where's your mates? Like, oh, they're outside, I'm going out there now. But he was still by himself and I was thinking... I want to just make sure that he's got someone he can turn to if he's by himself or if he's struggling. <sighs> what are you like at school, Aaron? Do you think you do you work hard or you? Yeah, I work hard. I got I got a praise card. I've got a praise card. What is that for? I'm um, for doing working really hard in literacy. What sort of books do you like? Um, I know it's pretty um babyish, but hard time reading. <laughs> hard time reading. And uh, Percy Jackson. And Dive of a Wimpy Kid. It's been three days since Assad's exclusion. An assistant head, Mr Whitaker, has called him in with his mum for a reintegration meeting. Because of his attitudes, um, nothing seems to be working, so we need to give him a little bit of a scare. Where he knows that we're not, we're not joking, we're not, we're not going to take any of his nonsense. We're here to talk about you, Assad. We're here to discuss what your future is in this school. From what I can see, there are three options available to us. First one is, we find a place for you over in the behaving unit. You're over there with three or four boys, and they are all boys at the moment, with one, one member of staff, and you're doing specific lessons for people who can't cope in normal school. That would mean you for the next four and a half years, being over in the behaving unit. The second option is that your time at this school comes to an end. Or we get you back somehow. Somehow we find a way to get you back into this school. You're very lucky to be, to be given any options at all. Because the initial reaction was, let's just get rid of him. Come on, don't just sit there and quietly. Sorry, Mr. Whitaker, Mr. Roberts. At this point now, you've got to make an undertaking to me and Mr. Roberts. You've got to be saying to us that this is the last time that we have this conversation with your mum. That every conversation we have with your mum from here on in is going to be positive. I'm really sorry. This isn't your fault. You are doing a brilliant job. You've got a mum here, right, who's working hard for you, and you've let her down. 
You have to take responsibility for yourself. That's what growing up is about. Who is the only person who can sort this out? Me. You have four and a half, five weeks till Christmas. Right, you're going to be perfect to that point. You're not going to get any referrals. Your teachers come first and your parents come first. You sort it out or we need to find you somewhere else to go. You never want to give up on a pupil. However, my attitude is I would rather help the rest of the class and get rid of this one person if that person is not willing to change. What do you think to us, Dad? Well, we've told him yeah. clearly enough, haven't we? Yeah. And if it doesn't sink in... I think he's got five weeks. Yeah. If he doesn't sort out, he's in trouble. Please. I just messaged my friend now. I said, make sure you bring some fags tonight. Some fags? <laughs> what for? I have a light on smoke when I go out now. Should I? I swear to God. No, shut yeah. up! I'm not listening to you! It's only on a every now and again. <sighs> oh, I love it! Oh, my ass. It's registration. And House Captain Jack is waiting to take on his new duties as Aaron's mentor. Come on, let's move it. Get in quickly. Come on. Miss, this is my regiment, but no one's in. Is it assembly for your house today? Right, is it regular? Um, oh, you're in F7. There we are, sweetie pie. <sighs> There they are. That's where you were. Look, I'm looking for you. Aaron. How come you're late today? Huh? How come you're late today? Oh, woke up late. Huh? Woke up late. Like I always do. That's not good, is it? Just sort that out. See you later. Yeah. Aaron's a very shy and to himself type of type of kid, which is pretty challenging, but. Our house, it's a family, you know? In that family, you can't be leaving anyone behind. You can't be letting everyone be sad. You literally have to, you know, stick your neck out for it, for everyone and you know, help everyone out. What are you going to be doing then over the holidays? Holidays? Oh, uh, nothing. Nothing? Yeah. What did you ask for them for Christmas? Uh, I didn't ask for, huh? well, I, I didn't ask for nothing, but... You didn't ask for anything? I didn't nothing. Ask. I'm waiting for them to bring it to me. Huh? I'm, waiting, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for them to bring it to me. All right. See you later, Aaron. All right. Aaron's been really hard to get through to. Uh, I've been trying to, like, ease into, like, conversations, like, how's your work doing and stuff like that, and he's, he's not having any of it at the, at the moment. He's, uh... It's just, like, he doesn't listen to you at all, and he, he, he gives you one-word answers as well. I do. Yeah. It, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't work. He's really hard not to crack. God damn it. Oh, thank you, darling. What lovely manners. Go on then. So what's this for? I'll go through the report and find out where you're at. Yeah. Since the meeting with Assad's mum four days ago, assistant head Mr Whitaker has put Assad on daily report. Right, grab a seat. OK, grab a chair there. Hood down. Right, it's my last meeting of the week. I've left the best till last here, Assad, have I? Right, OK, let's have a look. That's good, but look, look what we're doing down here. Look at this here. You've ruined it this afternoon, right? That shouldn't be there. The three crosses you've got on here have all happened in the first 10 minutes of lessons. So that's going to be your target on Monday, all right? Is that when you go into a class, you're going to get your coat off, right? And you're going to sit down and you're going to get ready to work. Good. Well done. I know I need to learn in school and I need to improve my behaviour. 
because I don't want to get excluded or anything. What's so interesting with Asad is that he really, really wants to be defiant on the outside. But I think part of him wants to be good. I don't think we'll ever completely win with him. But I think, you know, that he'll be on side. It's Parents' Day at Willows. What, what subjects do you like out of those? Art, drama, French, geography, history. <coughs> All of them? Yeah, but OK, really no, is there any subject you don't like then? I dread maths sometimes. <laughs> Assad's mum is due to hear how he and his brother are progressing, but has come to reception following an argument with her sons on the way to the school. I've had enough of her, OK? <laughs> I cannot take this anymore. I've had enough fries in my voice out every day. I don't know what they like in a school. I'm sure they're very naughty and they are ten times worse at home. OK, we'll find somebody to have a word with you now. Fancy making your mother upset like this. You come with us and leave the boys. Leave the boys with us and you come in here, OK? Now you two happy? Got what you wanted? to see if she can help. Mrs Ballard calls Assad's mum into her office. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, it's all right, it's all right. It's all, it's all right, be all sad. It's just do what I know. Oh, come on, it's all right. Come on, we help you. We they help just, you. They just, he, Assad keeps on answering me. He's not scared of the teachers. Who else is he going to be scared of then? Um, I think he is scared of the teachers, but sometimes, sometimes, come and have a sit down. Let's get the boys in and you. You're going to sit down like a big girl. Yeah. Come and sit down, boys, please. Take your bag off and take your coat off, please. Thank you. Mm, by me. I'll tell you what I, I'll say to, to you. It's our job in this school isn't just to educate children. It's actually to support families as well. What sort of things are you putting up with at home? He will say F-U-C-K-I-N-G, then help. That's the word he's using to me. Right, your face gives me respect for you. Your face and your smirk makes me feel very cross with you. I've got involved in some of the actions of your younger, younger son across the last couple of weeks because of when he brought the BB gun into the, into the school. And actually, I will tell you this, he's actually been very respectful and I'm assuming today that some of the stupid smile on his face is because he's embarrassed. You stop being disrespectful to your mother because in two, three years' time, when you are a man, you will really regret that. You will really regret that. How would you feel if you saw someone outside of school speak to your mother like that? How would you feel? What would you do? She's your mother. Do you like to make your mum angry? No. I feel sorry for my mum, because, look, my mum should be expecting me to be bad. She would, she would be thinking that I'm good. I think we've got to a point with Assad where we need to try something different because he needs to know that actually we're behind him and we want him to be good. I've offered him to be able to go on the Outward Bound trip um, with actually some short-term goals that he needs to achieve if he's going to be able to go. That can be the carrot, really, along with the stick, that really gets him going forward and starting to conform. Two times eight is 16. Three times eight. 24. Let's keep this moving on the dance floor. Benji and Lewis, swap seats, please. Benji, what's in your mouth? A tongue. Sorry, I lost it, so... God, no, anyway. Aaron has lost his so We're trying to pop in today and purchase another one. Look. Well, that's, that's my mum's signature. It's over halfway through term. 
but Aaron is still getting to grips with the responsibilities of secondary school. Right, I've got a spare tie somewhere. Aaron, come here. Can we finish that over there, please? Thank you. Mr Roberts has a solution. He hopes will at least get him to lessons on time. Right, set. Right, look, 9.08, that's today, that's the time. 28th of November, Friday, it's all set for you. Right, let's do the, let's set the alarm. Listen now, part of growing up is not relying on your mum to get you up in the mornings. You're the only one we've bought an alarm clock for, because you're the only one who keeps turning up late. Thanks. It's all right. What's Mr Roberts been like? He's been a little bit, um, sneaky. In what way? Emma Carey bought me an alarm clock. I was being embarrassed in the office. Literally. And do you feel like Mr. Roberts looks out for you at school? Yeah. Why do you think that? Um, obviously, because he's our head of house. Just helps us with stuff and all that, if we need help. He's, he's kind, and that's all I have to say. How are you getting on with Aaron? Hey, Badly. Like? Why, what's happened? Or what's happening? Or what's not happening? I, just, I can't get into him. Mr. Roberts has called a meeting to check on Jack's progress as a mentor. Right, so he's, he's struggling to make a connection with you. Mm. Have you spoke to him about uh, things he's interested in? No, cos, like, I've, I start to go into that mm. and he gives me a one-word answer, then he just stops speaking. OK. Try and get to Aaron as a, a person before you try and get to him as a, as a student. Cos if you say to him, oh, I was going in maths, you'll just say, all right. You want to ask an open question. A closed question is, are you OK? Yes. An open question is like, like you're saying there, is where it can lead on to a conversation, yeah? Right. Pretty smart for a PE teacher. Hey, don't be fooled by a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> what were you like in year seven? A uh, nervous little child, uh, you know, struggled to make friends. And how did you sort of get over those worries? I have no idea. Something just clicked and I just, I just, like, I'm, I didn't change. I kind of, like, put my feet down and, you know, I, I got to get around to make friends. Got it's been four days since Assad's mum visited the school. But his behaviour hasn't improved, and he's been sent to isolation once again. Your mum wasn't very happy to No. How proud of you? I'm not proud. No, not. Well, you're acting like you are. Asad. Yeah? Why are you in here? Tell me, please. Every teacher, Mrs. Always every teacher. Always give me crosses. While you're on this trial to get yourself away on this trip, you've got to be perfect. The trouble is, when you're only in year seven and things have already gone wrong in school, what happens with these teachers, they start to build up a picture of you. And when you're trying to change and to be a better man, I think that what happens is, is that some of that old stuff stays there. So I'm going to email around today and say, please, let's all start afresh. Give this boy a fresh start and see if we can make this boy as amazing as we believe he is. Do you understand that? Yeah. People here don't want to see you that you're bad. We all want to see that bit in you that we've seen already that's so good. That's sad. It's there. I can see it with my eyes. OK. I really want Assad to be able to go on the school trip. I think he's starting to feel as if everybody's uh, against him. And I think if we can put a bit of positivity back into his life and show that he can achieve certain goals and targets and get reward, um, I think that's a better way of pursuing things with him rather than through sanction at this exact moment in time. It's 8am, and Aaron's one of the first students in. 
Have you been getting to school on time? I've uh, been getting in school early quite a lot of times. An alarm clock makes me up. Go dee dee. Making ding 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 all the time in the morning. But it literally just turns it off. With the end of term approaching, the latest results of the house competition are out. Yes. Come here, look. Just don't. Just don't. Woo! Just, <laughs> just don't. Make the most of it. Make the most of it. Carnarvon's still in the lead. Nope. Raglan are catching up. If I can repeat last year, I'll be happy from fourth to third, from third to second, right up to winning the cup on the last day, which was uh, an absolutely fantastic feeling. Mm. They can't handle it, can they? No. Nope. Can't handle the fact that we're beating them. Yeah. Huh? No. I think that's slightly slanted. It looks like he's wearing mascara. <laughs> it does. <laughs> School is sir, let's go. A red or yellow counter. What's the probability of getting a red or a yellow? What's that? 0.5. You're right. It's been two weeks since Mrs Ballard instructed the staff to give Assad a second chance. Give me a high five. Excellent, Assad. And good, 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 good. You've had a good end to the day there, right. Just to bring you about Assad, really. He's done well this week. He's had an OK week. He's got to lessons on time, behaved himself properly. Thank you, Assad. OK, I'll speak to you soon. Take care, bye-bye. It might take a few months. It could take a few years for him to get there. But you don't give up on him, you know. You deal with the behaviours, you deal with each incident as it happens, but you don't give up on him. Assad? I only stopped here for a second just to say this to you, that trip. Look yeah. at me, you can do this, right? We're all behind you because we really want you to go. It's going to be great. OK, come on, you can do it. She understands me. She would always be calm with me. Like, if I'm naughty already, she would know the solution. Like, it just... It's like she's been through, it's like she's been through all of this. She actually, like, trusts me to be good again. Do you have a trick? Show me the trick, huh? She'd... <laughs> Put your hand here. What number is your car? Number eight. What color? Black. Black. OK. Sure? Oh! All right, Aaron, you got it on your own? Well, yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I'm right. Aaron's definitely got more confident over the past couple of weeks. He's been getting no referrals lately. I feel really proud of myself and him for actually listening to me. I feel, like, thankful I can help. Take the gas in. <clears throat> he said that he's going to miss me. That, that hit me right here. Right here. <sighs> your mama. Do you think you're shy? No. I won't be shy. How do you describe yourself? I'm, um, like, happy to wait in second school, like, like turn into a proper teenager, like. And I'm just a. It's the morning of the Outward Bound trip, and 20 students are getting ready to leave Willows. That's it. Come here. And after improved behaviour for the rest of the term, one of them is Assad. You need to prove me wrong, because I'm expecting a phone call about 10 o'clock to come and pick you up from Story Amps. You were very, very lucky to be going. Behave, have a good time, but if you prat around, you'll be coming home, OK? All right. He's kept his head down for the last few weeks. We'll, we'll, see, how, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. We'll see how it goes, yeah.
It's the taking part that counts. Everybody makes mistakes, but you got to learn from it. I'm not perfect. Who is? Nobody's perfect.